What if ships could sail over mountains? China didn't wonder what if. They went ahead and built it. Gupatan Shiplift, a $7.7 billion mega elevator that hoists 10,000 ton vessels, each as tall as a 66 story tower, a mind blowing 199 meters into the sky, like a floating colossus defying gravity itself. But why construct this behemoth to begin with? The reason reveals a lesson in strategic planning that goes well beyond just shipping cargo from point A to B. China's inland logistics faces a brutal obstacle, mountains, cliffs, and rough terrain. Nowhere is this more visible than the Wujiang River in Guizhou province, a place where old transport methods are slow, costly, and often unsafe. The landscape here isn't just tough, it's aggressive. Jagged limestone spires burst from the ground like dragon fangs. Tight ravines sink hundreds of meters deep. Rainy seasons turn quiet creeks into roaring floods. For generations, the region was dubbed the mountain that eats men due to its perilous roads and deadly rockfalls. Before the shiplift, hauling cargo through this maze of stone and water was nearly hopeless. Ships had no clear route. Trucks crept along fragile roads, barely surviving mudslides. Standard canal locks, successful in other regions, were too sluggish and inefficient for this intense landscape. A normal lock setup would have needed a chain of at least 20 lock chambers to handle the nearly 200 meter elevation jump. The financial impact was severe. Moving a single container from Guizhou to Shanghai could take two weeks and cost three times more than similar routes elsewhere in China. Local businesses struggled. Foreign capital stayed away. A whole province of 36 million, larger than many European nations, remained economically cut off in one of the world's most rapidly developing economies. So China did something bold. Instead of bending the river to trade, they reshaped trade to fit the river. Enter the Gupatan Shiplift, a machine so strong it shrinks four days of sailing into just 2.5 hours. Picture a vessel the size of a stadium entering a giant steel vault. The doors slam closed, sealed tight with engineered hydraulic gates, each weighing 400 tons. Then the show begins. Giant pumps roar, flooding the chamber with water, cradling the vessel in a floating elevator. The empty chamber alone weighs 3,000 tons. But once filled with water and a loaded cargo ship, the load rises to over 11,000 tons. Slowly, the whole unit lifts vertically, as if the river itself is climbing over the mountain. The ship ascends, rising higher than the Statue of Liberty and the Great Pyramid of Giza combined. From the ship, the view is unreal. The ground sinks away, the world below fades like a retreating canyon. Through small windows in the chamber's walls, passengers glimpse the shrinking scenery. River turns to thread, towns become dots. The immense scale of the mountains is grasped only midway up their faces. At the top, the front gates swing open, revealing a vast reservoir where seconds ago there was only sky. The ship sails ahead, continuing like it never just conquered a mountain. It's more than a shortcut, it's a game changer. A river expressway in the clouds. At the core of this device is a floating citadel, a massive ship vault 40 meters long and 12 wide, carrying hundreds of tons of water and steel. But how do you lift something this immense without disaster? The answer is brute mechanical force and surgical accuracy. The chamber travels up four concrete towers that act as both track and support. These towers are drilled deep into bedrock, with bases reaching 70 meters underground. Inside each tower lies a backup network of cables, counterweights, and safety brakes. 
256 steel cables, each strong enough to pull a jumbo jet, guide the chamber on a gear rail climbing system. These aren't normal wires. Each contains 127 strands of high tensile steel, wound in a precise pattern for maximum strength and minimal mass. Laid end to end, these cables would stretch over 80 kilometers. Metal teeth interlock to lift the whole structure, like a tower-sized cogwheel. These teeth must mesh perfectly every time with millimeter level tolerances despite the sheer forces involved. They're made of special alloy, hard enough to endure, yet flexible to absorb vibration. A nut column safety system cushions shock waves from winds, waves, and earthquakes. The lift must stay perfectly leveled, even under the immense pressure of water and ship. Sensors constantly check for any slight tilt, adjusting automatically. Counterweights and hydraulic shock absorbers keep it stable, making sure millimeter precision doesn't turn into chaos. The hydraulic dampers hold enough fluid to fill a swimming pool and can absorb forces equal to a small meteor hit. Power use is immense. The lift draws enough energy to run a small city, though much is supplied by the dam's hydro turbines. Backup systems can safely lower the chamber if the grid fails. Each lift is a high-risk dance of engineering and physics. One error and the 10,000-ton structure could crash catastrophically. Control systems have five-fold redundancy. Five computers check each other's results. If one disagrees, a fail-safe kicks in immediately. Each lift takes 30 minutes. In two and a half hours, a full mountain range is bypassed. The system can run 24 full lifts daily, moving nearly 5 million tons of goods a year. A massive detour shortcut, a real game changer for China's inland trade. But efficiency isn't the only aim. This project was built with larger intentions. At first glance, the Gupatan shiplift seems like a futuristic cargo solution. But deep down, it reveals a long-term plan that redraws China's economic map. For years, Guizhou was a logistical void. Its economy strangled by the same mountains that blocked transport. Factories stalled, trade limped, whole areas were cut off from growth. The province was among China's poorest, with per capita GDP just a third of coastal regions. Now that's different. With this vertical river path, Guizhou is plugged straight into China's main economic artery, the Yangtze River. The result? A freight corridor of 5 million tons that slashes costs, boosts trade, and turns a once forgotten land into a vital trade center. The stats speak, shipping costs from Guizhou dropped 67% industrial output rose 42%. Outside investment soared 83%. Dead-end industries like advanced tech and agriculture now make financial sense. A place once known for basic farming now boasts tech parks and export zones. Villages that were barely surviving now flourish as support hubs for the new transport system. Thousands of jobs emerged, not just in shipping, but in repair, logistics, and services. Tourism exploded. The lift is now a national landmark, drawing both local and global tourists stunned by this mechanical marvel. But here's the larger vision. This isn't just about boosting one province. It's about reinforcing China's own internal supply chains. Picture this. If overseas trade lanes are blocked, ports close, or sanctions hit, how does China keep moving? That's when domestic mega infrastructure like this becomes essential. The Gupatan ship lift joins the Three Gorges Dam, the South-North water transfer, and a network of inland canals. Together, they form an internal logistics web, 
capable of keeping trade flowing even if the outside world shuts down. This isn't theory. China's dual circulation strategy clearly favors internal systems that work even without global connections. Projects like this bring that strategy to life. While the world marvels at China's skyline and speed trains, it's these hidden trade veins buried in rivers and hills that may prove most important. These undertakings draw less attention, but may shape the future far more. The lift also plays a role in climate adaptation. As weather grows unstable, water control becomes crucial. Systems like Gupatan help control floods and keep routes open even in changing climates. This lift isn't just a structure. It's a failsafe, a strategic tool in a world full of uncertainties. A real-world proof of China's future-focused planning. Was it built for speed or for security? The truth seems to be both. The Gupatan shiplift isn't just an engineering achievement. It's a signal, a $7.7 billion mountain elevator that redefines terrain, rebuilds trade, and transforms entire regions. And it's just one part of a bigger game. Similar projects are underway in other Western provinces. The tech from Gupatan is being enhanced, copied, and scaled. Even more advanced lifts are coming. And now, China's infrastructure experts are helping build similar systems in Southeast Asia, Central Asia, and Africa, part of the Belt and Road Initiative. What started as a daring idea is now a blueprint for the world. If China can do this, what's next? Because while everyone watches their cities rise and trains race, it may be the quiet, buried infrastructure that reshapes everything. And if this is only the start, how far will China go? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe and check out the next one on screen.